you know, we uh, we've been playing D and D for a long time. I I mean, well, I mean, not as much as calendar wise. Calendar a long wise, time. yeah. But you know, we we don't get together as much as we'd like. Um, mostly because we're adults and we're not like, you know, M- Mercer getting paid <laughs> straight cheese. But like, you know, and we, we don't we don't always have it all, every weekend off and yeah. like. Some of us work non, non nine to five jobs. Life happens. So, yeah. um, but you are our DM, dungeon master, dungeon master for the uninitiated. Sometimes GM, game master. It depends on some people have like a, like a, a feeling associated with the word dungeon. I don't know why it's called Dungeons and Dragons. Like yeah, you should dungeon master whatever. But um, I think you do a pretty good job. I do, I do, I do whatever I can. <laughs> like, so, I mean, I you, still, I still haven't been able to like compare. Like, I've played the game. the The majority of me playing the game has been me dungeon mastering. Mm-hmm. Like, I before this, I never played a game with anybody else. It was like I got together with you and my wife and you know everyone else. I was like, hey. Is this something that we want to do? Like, I'm willing to invest some money into it. I'll bear the brunt some of the cost. Money. I'll bear the brunt of the cost. I think we rounded third on some money <laughs> ages ago. But yeah, I, I I get your point. And and like, would this be something that we would be willing to do? Like, there's going to be a time commitment and so on and so forth. Like, would we be willing to do this? And everyone was like, yeah, we'll be willing to to, to hop into this. And I've run some one shots where we've had more people over. Like. Mm-hmm. I think my best one was probably the Christmas one. Um, Hot but... chocolate. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, we've run, we've run it for a while, and I have a lot of fun doing it. I'll tell you what I remember about starting playing D anD D, and no, this isn't going to be a D anD D episode, but we're going to talk about talk about it anyway. Um, <laughs> what I remember about starting was I knew the like y- you got me into it, and I learned the basics. I knew that you know. There's dice. These, these dice each do a thing. You roll that and then add this number to it. Yeah. Sometimes this number and this number. My and then... my character has a has characteristics. I am playing as that character, right? There there yeah. are events that are happening. Blah blah blah. Yeah. And the... you and you say I want to do a thing, and then I tell you to roll a dice, and then look at some numbers, and I tell you how well you did at that thing. Yeah. Whether or not and that's you the did majority the of the game. Yeah. Like, um, and you can get creative, and I and that's what I really liked about it was that it you get out of it what you put into it. Yeah. Right? But the thing that I didn't know was like some of the minutia. There's and, well, and there's there's lots of that, and it's like, more like to keep everything kind of friendly and smooth transitions as everything goes. To keep along. it fun, and and the cool for, part for for everyone. Yeah, the cool part about D and D is. That the rules are as strict or as relaxed as you want them to be, mm-hmm. right? As, and, as we all agree for them to be. Yeah, and ultimately, the 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 DM settles all ties, also yeah. so to speak, right? <laughs> and in in essence, um, like if you're just playing a casual game. You could just have a game where it's like, hey, we, we turned on God mode for this game. Yeah. We're just trying to figure out, like, we're just trying to see some stuff. Yeah. And we're just having fun, and we just want to be here for the story. We just, we just want to do a Diablo style. Like, I want to go into a place and smash a bunch of stuff with a giant axe, and then collect a lot of gold, and then go home. Like, that's all I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> and conversely, you could also have, like, a nightmare game where, like, everything is everything three is... levels above you. and <laughs> Everything is nails hard. Yeah. And yeah. so... You're expected to die. Yeah. You know, your your ha- character is expected to be done. Have, have a notebook full of backup characters. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and anything in between. Yeah. And if you're having a, like a casual game, like we started out, and I didn't, I didn't even know what meta gaming was, right? And okay. <laughs> you introduced us to that concept, like, hey, it's w- it's knowing stuff that you know. But your character or another character shouldn't Correct. And in that sharing of information or whatever. Um, I, the, I put the biggest pressure on it of like telling another character how to play their character because yeah. you because you know a certain set of rules 
and they may be newer or whatever, like, don't, but like, you know, someone gets to their turn and they're like, I'm not really sure what to do. Um, and then, and then someone across the table is like, you do this and this and this and this. And they're like, "Mm, no, no, no. Like, let them, let them figure out what they want to do. Like, you know, they can ask questions, you know, and you mm -hmm. can give answers, but don't tell them how to play their character. And, you know, like our, our primary campaign is WoW based, World of Warcraft based. And so I've played some World of Warcraft. You've played a lot more than I have, like a ton more, <laughs> orders of magnitude more. Yeah, um, I I re, I I am reserve <laughs> <laughs> because you can type slash played and it'll tell you how long you've played that character in the amount of seconds, minutes, hours, days, years. Blizzard, you're <laughs> stalking me. Um, and there's a couple of characters that I'm like, I don't know if I want to type figure that out. I don't know if I want to add that all up. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, yeah. Um, and so some of the people in our in our group um have everybody has varying degrees from none. Yeah. To I was there when like I I played the the very like, I, I, I was I there when, on launch day. Yeah. And I was there for all of it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so. I almost think that the people who have never heard of WoW experience it differently because they can actually role play their character, and when they go into a specific spot, they don't have that like, oh, hey, this is where this is Sentinel Hill. Yeah. I know what exactly what that is. Yeah, they're like, oh, this is a new spot that I legitimately have never gone to. Yeah, right. So, so to your point with metagaming, um, especially and not just and I use that as an example, but like. As that being a rule, you can enforce it as little or as much as you want based on how it's affecting the game and how it's affecting uh, everybody's enjoyment to, you know, yeah, in yeah. your in your opinion. So having said that, um, I'm Adam. <laughs> I'm Jeff. This is the end of the species podcast. Oh, this is another short one. Seven minutes. <laughs> nice. Um, but. The the um the buck stops or would stop and like I I don't just refer to our game but even games that we've watched uh-huh. where you see the sliding scale of justice go really fast and it could be <laughs> as as little as one player just going in and doing a dumb thing yeah and now it's like oh, well now you're about to ruin it for everybody so for in order for you not to ruin it for everybody yeah. We're gonna, I have to. We're gonna, we're I have gonna, to drop the hammer. Yeah, we're we're now rules lawyers. <laughs> yeah, all, all sitting here, and yeah. So instead of being, you know, fast and loose and just being like groovy, now it's like, all right, <laughs> just your turn. Don't say anything. No one else is allowed to talk. Everyone off your phone. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> that kind of. And shit. like to that point, the the reason that we're talking about that is because what we really want to talk about is this. Over the last couple of years, growing weird phenomenon of people that are self-proclaimed what I call First Amendment auditors, right? Well, a lot of other people call it that, too. Not well, just not just you. A lot of people, like the people that I follow call them frauditors, which is actually kind of funny. <laughs> um, and it's it's it doesn't f- like that name. I know it's it's cheeky and it's supposed to be insulting. It doesn't fit on one level, but it fits on another. And I think that's the point of what we're going to talk about today is um, to j- just to give you some background. A First Amendment auditor is one of these people. And, and we do something different on this show from other people that like cover these topics. One thing we don't like to do is highlight these people that like we did it with sovereign citizens. We just talked about sovereign citizens in general. Mm-hmm. We didn't specify and say this sovereign citizen because in in some cases what they want is attention yeah and we're not going to do that we did it with e-begging we did an episode on e-begging and we're and we there are some very prolific e-beggars out there we're not going to give them the light of day so it's the same thing with uh first amendment auditors there are some very um this is concepts and ideals not necessarily people and places correct 
And so there are some people out there that are well known in the First Amendment auditing community. We are not going to go, hey, go to look at this person and make fun of them or look at this person and harass them or look at this person and be cool with them. We're just talking about the concept in general. Yeah. And so the the idea of First Amendment auditing is that you go to a, a place that uh, where the government is, whether they control the place or not, and you exercise your First Amendment right and I'm doing air quotes for, you know, we're not videotaping this thing. I can see them. Thing. I, I, I say there's um, proof of you doing air quotes. There. So it is conceded. And you you exercise those in a way that pushes the envelope in, I would say, is designed to get a reaction from the person that, right. or from the person that represents the government in this case. And... It's called an audit because the, I guess the concept is you should be allowed to do the thing that you're doing. Yeah. And they should leave you alone. Like the IRS. We're allowed to audit you. Yeah. <laughs> We're coming so, in to audit your books, get your shoebox full of receipts ready. <laughs> We're handling business. Yeah. You're going to go to jail. A hundred percent. Yeah. And that's, and that's a hundred percent right. Because the, the, the very first problem with the First Amendment audit people is that you like if it was in the town where I live, you're not representing me. Yeah, I never selected you. I don't know who you, you are. You weren't chosen by a committee. Yeah, there's, you're not part of a uh, there's what is it, neighborhood watch. <laughs> yeah, there's no feedback loop where I can say, okay, First Amendment auditor, you did a good job on my behalf, or no, you didn't do a good job. Mm-hmm. You're not accountable. Anyway. You're removed from position. So <laughs> you. You're just a guy showing up to do a thing yeah, because you feel like it. Correct. So I hear a lot of First Amendment auditors going, especially when civilians, you know, get in their face and say, you shouldn't be doing what you're doing. They say, I'm fighting for your rights. And the answer to that is, no, you're not, because I never it's it's not like you're a lawyer and I and I hired you (laughs) or that you were a lawyer appointed to me by anybody who. You know, like the government can appoint me a lawyer because us as a society <clears throat> elected our government and we gave them the responsibility of doing certain things. And then right. we have a feedback loop <clears throat> where we hold them accountable. There's no such loop with the First Amendment auditors. No. There's no government or social appointing. that's It's, it's self-appointment. Appoint, yeah. Um, the second thing is that as a First Amendment auditor, you are going up to people. <laughs> and people are people. They're flawless. They're not flawed, yeah. uh, flawless. They're flawed. They have reactions. And there are times, as we've seen even in, in recent with recent events, where people have reactions that are bad. And it could be that they're bad people. It could be that they've made bad decisions. It could be all sorts of things. In some cases... They are unprovoked. They just had a bad, like, reaction to something, to nothing. It, or they had a reaction to something perceived. Or mm-hmm. they just took something out on something that they shouldn't have taken out it out on. Um, in some cases, people are just, you know, like, you could have a police officer that was that's just behaving badly. Or you could have a police officer that just got broken up with or is having a day or whatever it is, right? Yeah. People come in all shapes and sizes. I can tell you that if it's a government employee uh, that is like a firefighter, police officer, EMT, they get training to deal with certain high stress situations. And we as a society create the program that put them there yeah. because we want them to deal with those high stress yeah. situations. Because you don't want to deal with it. Yeah, I'm not. A bank you don't, robbery? You don't want to run into a fire. Yeah, like, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not chasing the dude that he robbed the bank with an Uzi. Yeah, that's you got that. That's you. That's you, you. you signed up to do that. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Got you. <laughs> so, so that's the, that's the, the that's the whole the whole scenario there, right? Um, why would you then try to interrupt that person? Like a First Amendment audit to me would be if I was to send two politically uh, 
opposite groups to apply for a permit at two different locations in the same city to yeah. do to, to do a, a a speech or a rally or whatever and see if they both got the same treatment there's an audit and there's an audit that a lot of people could stand behind because I, whatever my political ideology is if somebody thinks something different then and I believe in you know our government then I should be like yeah if somebody disagrees with me they should be given the same soapbox the same yeah. opportunity to have a soapbox that I do exactly so so there's that the the big thing about first amendment auditors that bothers me though is that the effect that they have is sometimes actually the opposite of what they expect it to be right they're they're going into a lot of these places and they're expect like they're expecting a gotcha moment like they're expecting to like walk into City Hall into one of the the you know boardrooms and find hookers and cocaine all over the place and be like ah this is what you're doing with our tax dollars it's gonna be all over the internet we've got you you're all gonna be fired and go to jail like that's what their ideas are that they're going to find because if you walk into City Hall with a camera and start walking around just videotaping it people are gonna be like what are you doing like what why are you here what are you looking for. Like, it's not like they're going to be like, oh, they're here. Quick, hide the cash and cocaine. Like, you know, like, where where are we going to put it? Put it in the server room. They're never going to go in there. Like, you're, you're, these people are allowed to come in and they're allowed to videotape and record in any of the general public areas. Wait one second. Public areas. It just occurred to me. Fuck GameStop. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes, of course. It just it just, it just jumped in my uh-huh. head. I figured I had to say it. Yeah. No, I, I mean, you got to get that point across all the time. Um, well, you were talking about hiding cocaine. Yeah, hiding cocaine. Um, they're, allowed, the, they're, they're allowed to film in any of the public areas or public workspaces um, as long as they do not, quote, disrupt a normal everyday function. But most of the time, what their intended thing to do is to disrupt function, their, their daily function. Instigate get talked to hopefully have someone with some authority show up so that they can like call them names or try and get some sort of reaction hopefully get touched moved thrown out or you know put in handcuffs or whatever and then they can sue for money like i think like you did something that you weren't allowed to do because i'm allowed to do whatever it is and like i want to check now i think the 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 movement has actually evolved past the suing now to just getting views because I I've it's seen just, it's, just, it's just a social media platform. Now. Well, it's, it's just like, I want to do this. And if the police arrest me, I know they're going to like, what's my bail going to be for what disturbing the peace or disrupting whatever. Right, it's, well, gonna, I mean, that's probably a I'm, misdemeanor. Yeah. I I'm going to spend a night in jail. They're going to give me some crappy bail and I'm going to pay that bail and I'm going to, they're not going to erase no police officer. Like very rare is going to be a police officer that gives a fuck or erases the footage. They're just going to be like, here's your phone back, you idiot. Get out. And then they're going to take the footage and put it on YouTube and be like, see what happens. See, this is what your, your government is. This is the way things are. And they're oppressing, they're oppressing the people. And they're like, you came in. To like the place where people pay their water bill and started hollering at people while they were sitting there trying to pay their bill, or the DMV, or, or the DMV. a bank, or like anywhere. With, like, like, look, if I'm paying my water bill, you were in the you were in the lobby of the courthouse, and like you were like chanting and holding a sign and what? Like, no, they they had you removed because you were disruptive. Correct. <laughs> and they were like they were trying to pe- keep things somber and peaceful. And, like, you came in there like a marching band. <laughs> and you're like, no, we can't handle this. We got people come. Like, especially, like, in the court, the courthouse ones I don't I don't get at all. Because it's like you're only allowed past up to a certain spot. And then, and then even then, like, you got people that are coming in there that are dealing with, like, lawsuits for loss of loved ones or, you know, tragedy and whatever. And, like, you're, like, that's, yeah, they need your happy ass screaming at them at the top of uh, at the top of your lungs about how inadequate our government system is while they're going in there to kind of deal with a tragedy like that's or a, even, that's another thing tapped on top of them that they or need to deal even with. just putting a camera in their face like mm-hmm. why are you here ma'am yeah um even uh, if you even if you my might... husband was murdered and i'm going <laughs> to the trial of the guy they caught to to, to that killed him like 
<laughs> like, <laughs> what do you, what's it to you? But here's the here's the the rub, right? Like, well, I want to show my YouTube viewers your yeah. face. Um, if you everybody like if if you think about what's the exception to the First Amendment, right? Everybody thinks of the same thing. You can't yell fire, yeah, in a crowded theater. Mm. And that wasn't always the case. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually there was actually like a, a a court case, yeah, and that that was the judgment. Like you look, there is a limit to the First Amendment, yeah, and very likely the reason for that court case was because some idiot yelled fire, yelled and fire, and caused somebody to get hurt, to or get killed, hurt, or trampled, trampled, die, whatever, or you know what caused panic, yeah. even if nobody got hurt, they caused panic. Yeah. Right. And then and they so, use that as their defense, First Amendment, and they're like, "All right, you know what? Now we now we have to set some rules." Yeah. <laughs> and, a and, whole and, season and any... of punked erased <laughs> because now, I mean, Ashton Kutcher, Kutcher was not able to yell fire to punk whoever was in a theater because that's illegal. Ka- Kanye West. Yeah, Kanye West <laughs> was not punked by Ashton Kutcher. By having to think that there was a fire in a theater where he was performing, yeah, simply because that's illegal and that is a limit that we place on the First Amendment. And, and you got to think, like, regardless of where you work or what you do or anything else in between, like, there's a, there's a, like, if you go to a public park, there's a set of rules there. You know why there's a set of rules there? Because someone did that thing and it wasn't right. The reason you've got you, the reason you get a memo or an email at work that says, "Hey, we're not allowed to do this anymore," is because somebody did it. Yeah, and it's like, well, of course, no one would do that thing. No, someone did it. Correct. And now, and now they have to put it in writing, and now you're responsible for like, hey, yeah, uh, you can't bring an alligator into your workplace anymore, and then feed it live animals. <laughs> That's a thing that you're not allowed to do. Uh, on Fridays anymore, looking at you, Bob. <laughs> yeah. Because you, you, why are you bringing a live alligator into work, and, Bob? Yeah, exactly. Not thinking of anybody in particular, Bob. Yeah. But, uh, you know. But, like, now, there, now there's a memo out there. Yeah. And someone had to put that on paper. That went through a legal department. Like, <laughs> like so, some lawyer had to read an incident and they're like, what happened? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, all right, well, let me type this up real quick, and you can put this in your corporate memos. <laughs> let's make that a rule. <laughs> Stat. Yeah. Immediately. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the same vein, today, today, you could go into the lobby of most police departments across the United States, walk up to the front and say, hey, I'm just curious. I want to know how the police department works. And I want to sh- make a video to show my kid or whatever, just to have to I put have, in my... I'm going to school for criminal justice. Yeah. And, and I'm trying to put a project together. Insert innocuous reason here. I'd like to have like a 15-minute conversation with, you know, someone in, in, you know, upper management or command staff or whatever you want to call it. And like, I'd like to videotape like some cops sitting at desks writing reports or whatever, if, if that's possible. And... The general consensus of that would be like, yeah, we've got to get a couple of like people on board with that, you know, but like that shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, it should be fine. And then you say, what day can I come in? I want to film it. I want to memorialize it for whatever reason. And you can do that, right? Technically, you can probably go into a lobby of a police department without even asking and just sit in the corner and film. And if somebody from the police department approaches you and says, Hey, what are you doing? I'm just, you know, I'm just filming to see how you guys are doing. And you know, you be courteous and cordial and everything's fine. Yeah. Right. Cause you're in a public space in a public building. Yeah. And cool. Nobody, nobody is going to yell at you or anything like that. Right. If you go into a place that's designated as you can film in a courthouse, go for it. Go, ha- go, go ham. You're good. But what will happen, what will eventually happen is enough First Amendment auditors will do this where it will disrupt business enough, especially if they are aiming to get arrested. Because if there's one thing that you and I both know is that when somebody gets arrested, Mm -hmm. and this is just from people that we know, (laughs) 
it causes a lot of paperwork <laughs> and backlog because yeah. especially when they're arrested for something stupid. Like if somebody if somebody murders somebody and you caught the person that did it and you arrest that person, you'll gladly do that paperwork because it's worth it, right? Yeah. But if it's just somebody being a jerk and disturb and it's like a disturbing the peace, they're gonna be out tomorrow. Why do you want to write two hours worth of paperwork <laughs> for that person? Like fill out all of these reports and then Sure enough, they're going to have a date that they're going to have to come back to court. And now you got to take a day that potentially could be that officer's day off, or it could be a day that they want to be doing something else. And they, yeah. now they got to sit in a courtroom and be like, yeah, this asshole, <laughs> he did A, B, and C. And look, why do I have to be here? He filmed the shit and yeah. put it on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Like well, he's moving for that to be suppressed. Oh, well, okay. Well, that's great. <laughs> like, but so, that's what he did. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah, and in any case, it's fine, right? What's what'll eventually happen is that some district attorney or attorney general or whatever, 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 right, will say, "Hey, this is really affecting the day to day of my city, my state, my municipality, my country, my this, my that." Boom. As a rule, and we took it to the Supreme Court, and they agreed with us, no more filming. You can walk in there, and you can talk, but as soon as the camera turns on, you're out. Yeah. Right? That's no longer yeah, part of the First Amendment in those areas. Yeah. And it becomes it, a law, and the people that, like, people like me, people like you, that we're just citizens, I'm just, I don't give a fuck, I wasn't going to film in there anyway. <laughs> right? And if and if there was gonna be like a news thing, I, I'm assuming half of it is staged or whatever. Anyway, yeah. like you're not gonna give me like ser- like spontaneous like real world real life footage. <laughs> like oh, we caught them. Like to your point, there's where they had the hookers and the cocaine. We caught them. Yeah, it's never gonna gotcha. happen. Gotcha. That's that's not a thing. Yeah. So I'm not gonna like. And just as a thing, like if you think you're gonna walk into a city hall and find a board meeting. And there's going to be like cocaine and hookers there. If you think you're getting out alive, <laughs> <laughs> like, good luck. I mean, in all seriousness, like they're just going to be like, "Oh, you got us." Oh yeah, well, you I'm going to tell put you that this. on the internet. If I was ever to be walking in a city hall for any reason, and I walk into the wrong room, uh-huh. and I see hookers and cocaine and a bunch of politicians, I'm going to pretend that I'm part of it. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> And I'm I was just be coming like, by to see if anyone needed any Gatorade. <laughs> yeah, any like Gatorades. Taking drink orders. <laughs> Anybody, oh, sandwiches are on me. You're going to be hungry soon. <laughs> and then I'm getting out of there. And I'll, the only person I'm telling besides my wife is you. Like I'm, It'll be like, yo, I swear if you tell anybody, I'll deny it. <laughs> but this shit happened. Because I know there's a drone pointed at my house for the next year or so. Like, monitor who he told. <laughs> You know, like that's that's just the thing, but the truth is that's not happening, and that's not this is imaginary. Like it's not a thing. I really believe that First Amendment auditors are in it to to get the attention. Mm-hmm. It's the, 50, it's the get the reaction. Of fame. Yeah, put the reaction up. They because if 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 it was really about addressing the First Amendment, right, and. Everybody agrees the First Amendment is sacred. The fact that I can, the fact that I can sit on this podcast with you <laughs> and just talk shit and just yeah. say whatever comes to my mind, I don't give a fuck. Like whatever, yeah. Boom. The fact that I could do that, that's that's sacrosanct. Like I should be able to do that. Like even the the privileged parts where I could say to my wife the horrible things <laughs> that I think I'm gonna do. Like if some whatever shit happens, and then she. You know, doesn't have to testify against me yeah. when some some such shit happens, <laughs> right? That stuff, though, that's important for reasons other than the cartoony ones I'm thinking, right? But if it was really about protecting the First Amendment, then if you go into a police station and you film and you antagonize and you really believe you're in the right about the First Amendment... And they arrest you, they bring you into the police station, you stay there overnight, you get released the next day, or you get put on bail, or whatever. The very next thing you should do after you leave is call a lawyer. Yeah. And just say, hey, these per- people violated my First Amendment right. And if you have an ironclad case, because you filmed it, right? Mm-hmm. 
you put it on tape, there isn't a lawyer in America that wouldn't like start salivating, drooling. <laughs> like what? <laughs> a civil rights case? Yes, please. With the <laughs> bottomless pit of money that is the government? <laughs> You, if you were right, you would have lawyers like punching each other out. Like it would be like The Voice, right? When all four judges hit the button, and then they have that moment where you have four Grammy winners <laughs> fighting over a middle school teacher because she sang a great rendition of uh, one of the songs from uh, from Dreamgirls. Like, hey, pick me, pick me. That's what you're gonna see. Yeah. But the reality is, no, you that's not the point. It's not yeah. that, oh, I found the I found the bad cops and I got uh, you got them on tape. Yeah. You, a lot of the First Amendment orders, like if you look up videos on these dumb assholes, they <laughs> they leave the police station with this sense of like I got a chip on my shoulder and there it is, the proof that yeah. they are tyrants. So you're telling me you can't find a single person to prove that in court in our legal system? Like, if the First Amendment means anything, <laughs> right, and and somebody violates and you can't defend it in court when it's violated, then it doesn't mean shit. Yeah. So if it really is about that, then go go for it. I, as many of these dudes have done videos on this shit and gotten arrested uh, or uh, charged or convicted or whatever. Yeah. That there is a huge amount of material from which a lawyer could make a like you, you'd be doing a class action against yeah. every state in the union, <laughs> but that's not happening. No, it's not. And and the reason for that is because people look at that and be like, okay, look look at the actions of the person, and then look at the the counter actions of whatever government employee they're making their accusation against. Did his did that employee's reaction fit what his actions were? Yes. Then there's no issue, no case. Go go away. Have a have good a, day. Go away. Have a nice day. Like Dis dismissed. In a lot of cases, the the only the only ones of these that I see where it escalates quickly on the government side is places like the post office, or I and I understand it also in a place like a court, because sometimes. Um, in a court, for example, you have a trial and there's parts of that trial that get redacted from the record right? for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. In a post office, that's a whole, like anybody who with any understanding of American history <laughs> and any understanding of, of terrorism in, in the United States or any understanding of any kind of like what has happened in the post office over the years yeah we'll understand that there's a little bit of hesitance to why like hey no you can't do certain things and we've posted it in such a way and we're going to enforce that because if we let it slide a little bit another bad thing happens you know when like when bombs get sent through the mail they get sent through the mail through the post office yeah so Sometimes people like that, like if you go into a post office and you're filming when you're not supposed to, you could be looked at as a distraction yeah. that somebody else could then use to do something else. So that now it's now it's serious. Now it's yeah. like, wait a minute, why are you throwing me off here? Yeah. No. Like, why are you causing disturbance? Why are you making us look at you? So ultimately what, what will end up happening, and this is the effect that, that these First Amendment auditors have that... I don't know that they that they know. I don't think they care. <laughs> the effect that they end up having is that they um, strip away more rights. No, I would agree with that. That they're that it, well, they're doing a thing which is causing someone to have to go and write a new rule and like, all right, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, Bob brought in an alligator to the police station. <laughs> And <laughs> now we've got to write a rule well, think about of, bringing the the alligators into the police station. Like, yeah, they're 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 creating their own drama. Think about the fact that, like, right now, there's a huge debate about the Second Amendment. Who cares? Like, I don't care what side of it you you are on. Right. There are people that say this type of gun shouldn't be allowed in the street. There are people that say every single gun should be allowed. The only reason we're having that is because somebody took the type of gun that we're talking about and went and did some shit with it. Yeah. Like, if nobody does that, 
then we're not having this conversation. Yeah. It was like, oh, bazooka? I don't give a fuck. Nobody's, <laughs> no, all people are doing with bazookas is shooting holes in the ground mm-hmm. and, and then, you know, plant, and then planting flowers. They're playing tic tac toe <laughs> out in the field and then they, you know, they're planting, planting flowers afterwards. Nobody will say shit. Yeah. Right? You know why? Because there are states where you could buy fireworks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can Whole buy- huge ass fireworks yeah. and nobody talks about it. Why? Because, Unless you're a drunk idiot and you blew your hand off, nobody's like throwing fireworks at my house. <laughs> like if, if if that's what people were doing and every other week we had somebody throwing fireworks at somebody's house, we'd be like, all right, no more fireworks. Yeah. And there are the states where you see that they limit fireworks. It's because you either have big cities or places where people are prone to do that. Yeah. So if you look at any any one of the like the Bill of Rights, yeah. sacred <laughs> All ten amendments, right? Mm-hmm. If you look at anything that strips away at those, uh, to your point, Adam, like somebody did some shit, and now mm-hmm. we're gonna peel them back. So First Amendment auditors, stop doing what you're doing. You're fucking up my rights. <laughs> they're well, they're fucking up my rights, your rights, their own rights. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just basically making a lot of everything worse. Um, it's there. Uh, what what's the what was the thing that we always had um, in growing up? Um, our classrooms talked about it. Um, it was like fifth grade up because it was like that's when you're able to reason a little more. Um, they were like, look, we can run we can run our classroom by the letter of the law, or we can run our classroom by the spirit of the mm, law. Yeah. Um, and so like you know the no talking thing becomes like, hey, when I'm talking, you're not talking. Or it becomes no one's talking. At Period. All. Period. Case like, closed. Yeah, exactly. Because Calvin can't keep his <laughs> mouth shut. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, like, you know, like when the teacher's like, all right, we got uh, put your books away. We're going to switch from, you know, English to history, you know, whatever, like, and get to this page. And then, like, you can be like, hey, what are you doing this weekend? Blah, blah, blah. And like, oh, I'm playing Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, can I come over and play? Yeah, you know, like you, know, a whole, you have a whole little thing, and then it's like, okay, we're at we're on page ninety two of, you know, American government, and then and then your class starts. But you were able to have a little conversation as opposed to no conversation. Here's here's what you guys can do, listeners. Um, the the one of the big causes of this, I believe, is that we sensationalize bad behavior. We love to see like. That's the, yeah the Jerry Springer thing like that, I, that, the news does that a lot too though. yeah just and, in general it, it, and that is true and so there's a difference between like hey pratfall ha ha <laughs> funny right versus I'm gonna go and seek these like you, you over the years we've had like hey I'm gonna find two homeless people and have them fight on camera and then oh bum fights mil- yeah yeah a million views stop watching that shit yeah. Right when when you see First Amendment auditors, just don't watch, don't interact, scroll past it, mark it, and be like, "Hey YouTube, hey uh, TikTok, whatever the fuck you watch it on, don't show me this shit." Right? I don't want to see it. Don't give it attention. Right? Because that's the whole point. Yeah. And I guarantee you, the more attention you give it, the worse you're making it for everybody else, because. Trust me, <laughs> your rights are not absolute. Rights are never going to be absolute. And I don't mean like in a political way. I don't mean in any, like everything that you see and the, every time that you sensationalize this stuff. And, and it's not just the First Amendment auditors that get sensationalized. But the more you sensationalize them, the more of a chance there is that the that the reciprocal is going to be, okay, well, then now you can't do it anymore. Yeah. Congratulations! You've now, ruined you, it. You ruined, ruined it, for, it for, everyone. for everyone. Yeah, you, yeah. It's, it's it's a wrap. <laughs> and now we cannot meta game. Every time you roll a die, it has to land exactly in this mat. Otherwise, you fucking. Otherwise, it doesn't count, and it doesn't is a yep, one. Yep, it's a it's fail. A, and if you and if you write anything on your character sheet other than like we have a rule, like right, like hey, you, I give you this inventory. I well, gave I gave you an item card. Yep. If you lose that item card, you lost it. Yeah, <laughs> it's gone. That, that item is gone. You've misplaced it. I yeah. actually have. I don't even remember what it was, but there was an item that you had given me, 
And I took to heart that rule so hard that I think there was a point where I went to a doctor's office or something like that. It was very early on in COVID. And I don't know what happened to the card, but I never, ever mentioned it again. I didn't even, oh, yeah. I didn't even say I lost it. It's just, it's gone. It got eternal sunshine. <laughs> And that rule is like like me, yeah. you know, I'm a stickler. So I'll just, yeah. hey, what? Oh, so that means I'm dead? All right. Well, I guess I'm dead. Yeah. But like, <laughs> <laughs> but that's the but that's the thing in, in the game. We reached it that far because you clapped every time this motherfucker was breaking the rules during a fight. And now yeah. you can't have extra D6s no more. <laughs> no inspiration. No nothing. And we're keeping track of everything. <laughs> I, f- I paid all the money for the Dungeons and Dragons app, and every <laughs> single person puts their stuff in here, and I audit it at the end of the day. Yeah. Are you having fun? Yeah, exactly. All the fun's ruined. This has been the End of a Species <laughs> podcast. The only reason we're going to do this in this episode is because we do our episodes usually in packs of three and four. The first two episodes that you've probably already heard and have already been published days ago, we didn't give our. And socials. you've liked and enjoyed, yeah. Right? You've, you've, you've liked and shared and all of that. Subscribed. You, you you followed what I wrote in the description and what Adam wrote in the description and all of that, right? Well, in this one, you can follow me at Zeus and Jeff on Twitter and Instagram, and you can follow me and Tatooine at Tatooine Hermit on Instagram and Instagram only. And you should like and subscribe to all of our videos. Share them with your friends.